everybody, and welcome to Bonus Issues. This is our online extra for The Issue Is. we got our great panel here this week. we got Jasmine Kanick, political commentator. we got Joel Pollack from Breitbart.com. Welcome to you both. Thank you for being here. All right, so let's talk about um, one of the issues this week, locally, uh, was the LAPD. We have a new chief. Michael mm -hmm. Moore named. Charlie Beck is retiring. I know this is something you're very active on, Jasmine. <laughs> um, what's your reaction? Well, I'm, I'm happy that Chief Beck is retiring. I think that Mayor Garcetti had a choice of three department veterans, and he chose one. I don't think there was one that was any more qualified than the other. And I think it'll be really interesting to see what Chief Moore's style is going to be when he um, moves from assistant chief to chief. So we'll find out really soon. We're going into the summertime. L.A. tends to have a lot of crime in the summer, so he's going to be in the hot seat really soon. Do you have much of a take on this? I mean, you probably don't cover this as much as... I live uh, in Santa Monica. We're our own little country. We don't deal with it. <laughs> uh, but in terms of L.A. policing, I think a big issue in Santa Monica and L.A. is homelessness and mm -hmm. the challenges that poses increasingly to law enforcement and also to the community. And it's a real struggle for Mayor Eric Garcetti and for other authorities and we've got to figure out a way to help people and it, the number just keeps growing and it's not all from California there are people coming here from other states mostly because the weather mm -hmm. but it's it, it's one of the most profound challenges that we're facing another uh, story today that was really shocking a, a gut punch to a lot of people was this news about Anthony Bourdain uh, committing suicide at 61 Kate Spade committing suicide a couple days ago what do you make of this? What does this say about, does it say anything about our mental health system? Are there changes that need to be made? What do you think? I think that depression doesn't go by how much money you have, what race you are, um, what gender you are. And so you can be rich, you can be wealthy, you can be famous, um, and you can still suffer from extreme depression. And I think what's happened in this country over the past few years is that there's been an increasing spotlight on mental health. You know, we probably, as a society, don't do as much to take care of our mental health. But what also it brought to mind was just the people around us. Like, how often are we checking on the people around us, mm -hmm. making sure that they're okay? And are we encouraging them to get help, or are we stopping them from yeah, getting help? Yeah, stigma. Yeah. I absolutely agree with everything Jasmine said, and just to say that people, I think, should be comfortable with asking for help, that's been the message a lot of people have put out today and throughout the week, that if you're feeling down, you should reach out. There are people who are there to take care of you. A uh, big story of next week is uh, North Korea. We've got this summit that's planned. We think it's going to happen. <laughs> people are actually think, flying yeah. to Singapore now. Uh, Joel, what are your expectations uh, for the summit? Well, it's interesting how the president is trying to lower people's expectations. I think we will see some kind of resolution of the Korean War, which obviously, practically speaking, has been over for a long time, but they're going to finally end it. I don't know that we'll see a grand bargain on denuclearizing North Korea or moving toward reunification of the Korean Peninsula. That might take a while. But the fact that this meeting is happening is encouraging. We don't want to get into a deal just for the sake of having one. I think that was the mistake of the Iran deal. but. We're giving Trump the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully he will be successful. And China's role in all of this is also interesting because we're trying to get them to help us in North Korea, but we're also fighting with them on trade. So this is a very delicate dance. I'm expecting some positive things. We'll see what happens. Anything? If I had anything to add to that, I would hope that ahead of next week's summit that our younger folks in the country take some time to educate themselves on the the war between the two Koreas and and America's involvement, China's involvement, et cetera. Because I think, because as you said, this the war has has been over, but it, it's not officially over, and we have generations who know nothing about this. And so when this is on the news, they don't really understand the significance of this meeting even taking place or even the fact that the two Koreas came together and the two 
you know, presidents sat down and they had a meeting. I mean, that is significant. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people know more about the Kim summit with Kim Kardashian right. than with exactly. Kim Jong Un. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hoping Dennis Rodman shows up and solves all the problems. <laughs> That'll be I mean, wouldn't fantastic. that be a great three shot? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump came through and did on that would literally people's heads would explode. Okay, uh, let's start uh, wrap up where we where we began with Bernie Sanders. Um, I, I, you were saying something interesting when we were off air about Bernie Sanders about why you think he may have been a better opponent uh, for Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton. I think one of the things that Trump offered as opposed to Hillary Clinton was authenticity. And he was talking about issues cutting through political correctness and giving you kind of the real scoop on where America was. And Bernie Sanders was the one candidate with more authenticity than Donald Trump in the sense that he's always believed what he's believed. Yes, his views are very left wing, but I think what's important to people is you can trust that he really believes them, which wasn't necessarily the case with Hillary Clinton and probably not as much with Donald Trump, who used to be a Democrat before he was a Republican. So Bernie Sanders brought an authenticity to the race that I wrote at the time made him a stronger candidate in some ways than Donald Trump. Do you think that he's running again and do you think he should? I don't think he's running again, but he knows that if he says he isn't, he loses that momentum, he loses public interest. I don't think he should. I think that most people who have been around politics for more than a decade or two should give some other people a chance. But I think he will be a very important voice, and the people that he brings to the table will continue to shape politics in California and across the nation. He's been around politics about four decades. Yes. What do you think? Do you think he should run again? There's a lot of people. You were just with him last week. <laughs> Thousands of people showed up for him. He they draws did. a bigger crowd than probably anybody out he there did. right now. He's still immensely popular. I agree with Joel that I think that people who have been um, around in politics as long as Sanders and other folks should kind of make room for, for younger generations to come in and give them an opportunity. They also should be grooming them as well. I think that Sanders is holding on to his popularity right now. He's holding on to the fact that he has so many people who are interested in what he has to say so that he can use that in the 2018 midterms, use that going into 2020. I don't know if that means he's going to run, but he's definitely smart enough to not alienate his base right now. It's interesting, though, that when I asked him the question, who's next, he didn't say a name. There isn't necessarily a natural heir to Bernie Sanders, although it seems like a lot of the senators are trying to go more left. You see Kamala Harris trying to go more left, Elizabeth Warren, a lot of the people adopting a lot of the policies that Bernie has put forward, especially when it comes to universal health care. I mean, what do you make of Kamala Harris? I think that she's great. I'm still trying to figure her out. She's, she's moved up pretty quickly. I think a lot of people are still trying to get a feel for exactly what her politics are. How consistent is she going to be? Um, and we haven't gotten that yet. So I think she still needs to put in some work. That's me. <laughs> in terms of Bernie Sanders' politics, I think the natural heir is actually Bill de Blasio from New York, the mayor of New York City, who has done better than conservative critics like myself said he would do. He's got some issues, got some problems, but if you're looking at how a socialist governs a very large political entity, and New York City is bigger than many states, I think that's a model to look at and maybe he is a successor or, or there are other examples like that around the country but maybe he's one of the successors to Bernie Sanders. Although a lot of people in that city would not like what's happened with homelessness there. Just like they don't like what's happening with homelessness to here. Say that. I think the yeah. connection by the way between what's happening nationwide in all of these cities is the opioid crisis. I think that that's a big chunk of homelessness. It's not the only part. You've got housing costs going through the roof. Yes. But I think the opioid <laughs> crisis is one the Trump administration has tried to tackle, but we're not seeing it just yet. And it's about more than sentences. It's about more than enforcement at the border. All of those things are very important. But there's a huge problem of dependency that is very difficult to solve because ultimately it comes down to the individual struggles that each person has. And maybe that's related to the mental health issues we were talking about before with depression and so on. I think that that's a crisis that our country hasn't grappled with just yet. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to leave it there. Thank you both for coming here. Thank you. Thank you for bringing your six-year-old daughter with you. Um, <laughs> I think that there's no better show for six-year-olds than the issue is. That's right. <laughs> so we encourage all young children to watch us every week, especially the Digital Extra bonus issues. Have a great week, guys, and hope to see you Thank back you. here again Thank soon. Thank Thanks you. for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.